copyright. Disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statutes that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Blah, blah, blah. Legal mumbo jumbo. Please stroke my fat while you tell me how smart I sound. Basically, 30 seconds of this to let Rockstar know that you can't take, get it? Because take too interactive? Anyways, all of this to say, Rockstar, you can't take down my video or copyright strike me because it's fair use in corporate talk. Or in normal English, also known as suck my nuts. It's September 18th. 2013 on a beautiful Wednesday morning the birds are chirping and you need to get your fat lazy 12 year old ass out of bed because guess what Rockstar Games just yesterday September 17th released one of the best triple A games of all time never has there been an opening like this in the entertainment industry this week, Grand Theft Auto V pulled in $1 billion in sales in three days. No movie or music release has ever come close to that. And with, as with earlier versions of the game, it is extremely violent. Lie. <gasps> no shit. Grand Theft Auto V has made twice as much that as the last Harry the Potter movie. It's a video that game that is weekend. shattering. The game made that almost film. one that's billion dollars. Best 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 nice worldwide sales. Yeah. 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 In your house, yeah. 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 Sold out. million dollars. That's one night, easily blowing away all expectations, and is now on its way to taking over the world's highest-grossing entertainment vehicle ever. It's the next day, because yesterday, when you went to go to your local store to buy GTA 5 with your mom's credit card, whilst convincing her that it isn't a violent, racist, and sexist mess of a game, you find 100 other Jimmies camping out the store with their 60-year-old, divorced, single, overcompensating fathers, just waiting at a chance to be the first to get their hands on Grand Theft Auto 5. Finally, after hours of waiting, you get your chance. You go home, boot up the disc on your PS3 or Xbox 360, no judgment, and you're greeted with the installation. That takes longer than that last minute in class when you're waiting to go home. You're greeted with a loading screen. Your little 12 year old <clears throat> gets hard from that girl with the bikini. FBI, open up! But the game finally starts. Wait, 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 hold on. Before all of this, we have to go all the way back. When Rockstar Games Incorporated was born, it was a brand new baby an American video game publisher based in New York City. The company was established in December 1998 as a subsidiary of Take-Two Interactive using the assets Take-Two had previously acquired from BMNG Interactive. Founding members of the company were Sam and Dan Hauser. This is very important because Dan Hauser will be an important dude later on. In January 2007, Take-Two announced that Donovan, until then managing director for Rockstar Games, had left the company following a four-month leave of absence. He was succeeded by Gary Dale, who became chief operating officer. Dale previously worked with the Hauser brothers and at King BMG Interactive, but left the company when it was acquired by Take-Two Interactive and joined Capcom's European operations as managing director in 2003. In just a couple years, Capcom failed <laughs> multiple times to deliver on their promises. There were so many subsidiaries of Rockstar Games. In fact, there are more subsidies than there are cancer types. Rockstar India. Rockstar Lincoln. And even Rockstar Vancouver. We're kind of on our way to the North Pole. Oh, a car won't take you there anyway. But if you like, you can take my snowmobile. Really? You just give it to us? Oh, sure, that's what Canadian hospitality is all about. If you like, you can have all my money and my leg. Okay. You get the idea. In October 2011, Dan Hauser told Famitsu, a Japanese company, that Rockstar Games was avoiding developing games in the FPS genre on purpose because, quote unquote, it is in our DNA to avoid doing what other companies. <laughs> Are doing. The goal point of Rockstar is to have the players really feel what we're trying to do." End quote. Hauser went on to say, quote unquote, our games 
up to now have been different from any genre that existed at the time. We made new genres by ourselves with games like the GTA series. We didn't rely on testimonials in a business textbook to do what we've done. If we make the sort of games we want to play, then we believe people are going to buy them." End quote. Now, just looking at this quote, you might think, yeah, that's reasonable, that makes sense. But knowing Rockstar now, having played GTA 5 now, you would have thought after reading that quote that he was literally f***ing with us. But he wasn't. Before the GTA series, there were many games developed prior and later. There was Monster Truck Madness 64, Earthworm Jim 3D, Thrasher, Skate and Destroy, Evil Knievel, the Austin Powers series, the Midnight Club Racing series, and Surfing H3O. Just to name a few, Rockstar had dipped their little piggies in the pool and experimented with some games. No surprise, they were shit. Rockstar's earliest disasters is a game called Monster Truck Madness 64. Yes, I am not joking. Sounds like something my future semen will come up with as a name for one of his drawings in preschool, which was released on July 30th, 1999. However, the 64 version, which had Rockstar's touch, received bad ratings. Computer Game Strategy Plus gave the same PC version 3 stars out of 5, calling it, quote, the same cheesy, superficial arcade racer it was last year. Consider this a graphics upgrade with some new tracks and leave it at that, end quote. Ironically and eerily, the same situation with Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, recycled garbage, which is supposed to be better, happened. I got a little job for you, pal. You want penis enlargement pills? Glad to see things back the way they used to be. <laughs> After finding 15 issues with game design, Doug Truman of the same magazine, now labeled Next Gen, said of Monster Truck Madness 64, if you want intense off-road racing, play EA's Beetle Adventure Racing instead and run this title over with your car. Yes, even EA, EA was doing better than Rockstar. EA. EA. Yet another disaster, Earthworm Jim 3D, God, these names, I'm dying out here. <laughs> released on October 31st, 1999. Virtually insignificant amounts of copies sold. Comments? Many reviews called the game uninspired, mediocre, and unable to compete with many other similar, higher-reviewed platform games at the time, such as Super Mario 64, Rayman 2, or Banjo-Kazooie. GameSpot's review of the Windows version was even worse, concluding with, quote, Earthworm Jim 3D has something to discourage all types of people from playing it. Fans of the series will be disappointed by the lackluster translation of the characters into 3D dimensions. Everyone else will be frustrated by the horrible camera, end quote. A game literally has the word 3D in it, in the title, but has terrible camera, graphics, and 3D animation. Fucking nice one, Rockstar. Jeff Lundgren reviewed the Nintendo 64 version of the game for Next Generation and stated that, Quote, at some point, you wind up asking yourself, who in their right mind would think that this was fun? End quote. Even their series were just awful. The Austin Powers series entry didn't do well. Chris Carl of IGN said, quote, That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airways. Rob Guido from Tampa Bay Times gave the game an F, stating that, quote, I love Austin Powers as much as anybody, but that's not enough to make me like this non-game. There are a few activities and some fun sound bites, but it takes more than that to be groovy, end quote. You can't even blame the consoles or the technology back then, because like I said, there were many good video games, such as Super Mario, Banjo-Kazooie, and even Crash Bandicoot were out to play. After all this, you think there's no way that Rockstar finds a way and that they should quit. Fuck no, baby! Well, Rockstar realizes the success of open world games and starts to focus on the only thing bringing them success. That's right, the Grand Theft Auto series. Although GTA was released before the other disasters of games, finally, Rockstar knew what they had to do. The game was an instant success. It was a bestseller in the UK. If you want some, I'll give it, yeah. By November 1998, global shipments to retailers of Grand Theft Auto's computer and the PlayStation versions had surpassed 1 million units combined. At the 1999 Malia Festival in Cannes, it took home a gold prize for revenues above 17 million euros in the European Union during 1998. 
GameSpot's 1998 review for Grand Theft Auto said that although the graphics may look, quote, a little plain, end quote, the music and sound effects are the opposite, praising the radio stations and the sound effects used to open and close vehicles. They also praise the freedom of the game, favoring it over other games that make the player follow a specific rule set and complete specific missions. That was quite new before, the ability to let a player mess around to their heart's content in an open world. When Rockstar Games realized that they were sitting on a gold mine, they made sure to exploit it. Let's quickly skim through. Grand Theft Auto was good. Grand Theft Auto 2 wasn't great. Grand Theft Auto 3, amazing. 97 out of 100 on Metacritic. Grand Theft Auto 3 was the highest selling game of 2001 in the United States, selling over 2 mi million units by February 2002. Within a year of release, the game had sold 6 million copies and generated over $250 million in revenue. By January 2003, it had sold 7 million and generated over $350 million. By March 2008, the game had sold 14.5 million units worldwide. The insane revenue and stock price allowed for more heavy budgets and investments into bigger and better projects like Max Payne. Grand Theft Auto Vice City, legend status. 95 out of 100 on Metacritic. Within two days of its release, Grand Theft Auto Vice City sold 1.4 million copies, making it the fastest selling game in history at the time. Could Rockstar be stopped now? No. Because a little game by the name of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came out. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. It instantly broke every record, selling like nuts, and received a perfect 10 out of 10 on official US PlayStation magazine. Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories, great. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories, great. Grand Theft Auto 4, absolutely phenomenal. Broke three Guinness World Records and demolished all previous records set by Rockstar themselves. Funny thing, that 18 plus sign? Yeah, that's because some 38 year old virgin who's never seen a woman in his life decided to make hot coffee mod. A mod that lets you dry hump your girlfriend with clothes on whilst you beat your little two inch penis in real life. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. You dirty <laughs> Whoever downloaded that shit, you should be ashamed of yourself. Try moving the camera around. It actually enhances the experience. Finally, after fans were waiting for a long time, after Rockstar collected insane amounts of money from their ambitious games led by their leader, Dan Hauser, who of course later left, Rockstar Games released a game that would break the internet and the world. Grand Theft Auto 5. GTA 5 released on September 17th, 2013. Instantly, it was a generational success. I mean, hands down, this is one of the best games of all time. It's as simple as that. Rockstar Games made one billion dollars from this game in 24 hours. What the f***? Everyone was talking about GTA 5. Little Timmy from the intro, your best friend, your granddad, your great granddad who's six feet under, your friendly neighborhood drug dealer, my personal favorite hooker, Chantel, everybody. So I guess what you're, what you're asking is, what is the problem? How is the game going to decline from here? Well, it doesn't really decline, we'll get to that. What's going to happen to allow for this colossal monster to fall, quote unquote. Now up to this point, everything was going relatively well. Rockstar Games decided that GTA 5 was so good and successful that instead of adding DLC and charging people extra for them to purchase it as a standalone game, GTA 5 was going to have an online multiplayer for players to enjoy DLC for free. Yes, free. At the release of the trailer, players who were already done with the single player wanted more and thus were excited and ready. GTA Online released on October 1st, 2013, just two weeks after the release of GTA 5. Again, major success. Players can interact. I wanna suck, well obviously you got a clit. I can't suck your clit, I wanna suck his dick. Hey yo, what the fuck? Play together. <laughs> race. Finish missions. That was a fucking no. disaster. You're so stupid! Compete against each other. Hey Vsauce. That's shitty! That's shitty! Rob convenience stores. Hello everyone, my name's Ali A. And today we're gonna be going over a method on how to rob convenience stores. 
You can, however, kill him and rob the register yourself. <laughs> which we'll go ahead and do. Oh, looks like we already got a bag. Buy guns. You want penis enlargement pills? Vehicles. <laughs> and so much more. Safe to say Rockstar was dominating the gaming scene at this point. Players were enjoying the online aspect of the game so much that the servers couldn't handle it at one point and you couldn't even connect online to play. Over the years, Rockstar took a well-deserved break. Players were still very active in the game, single player and multiplayer. Prices of items in the games were reasonable, you had to earn your dollars, and players were genuinely enjoying the game so much. However, over the years, the next-gen consoles were announced, and GTA 5 was re-released on PS4, Xbox One, and introduced to PC. This era marked the beginning of the end of the hype to GTA 5, and problems would soon start coming like crazy. See, the thing is, fans started expecting GTA 6 after years of GTA 5's release. Rockstar assured fans that they would focus their attention solely on GTA Online because it showed signs of great profit. There was nothing wrong with this. It's a business after all. A company. Its sole purpose was to make profit. Of course, there are some companies out there that are better than some, but I digress. Rockstar Games released DLCs for free. But here's the catch. They began to make it harder for players to earn money. Introduced the most cancerous thing on planet Earth, microtransactions, also known as shark cards. And they also started adding in DLCs what? that made no sense just for them to milk more money out of the player base. Now, the earliest sign of this was when they severely nerfed Rooftop Rumble, a classic money-making mission back in the day, and re-engineered it to make it longer so players would no longer be able to make $25,000 per completed mission in 60 seconds. At the time, the most expensive item was the Trophade Adder, a $1 million supercar and the penthouse in Eclipse, of course. If you owned both of those things, you were considered a king. If you wanted the Adder, and you had no dollars, you would have to play Rooftop Rumble 40 times. 2,400 seconds, 40 minutes. You were a kid, so maybe two days of playtime, and you would own the adder. However, Rockstar saw that they were losing out of money, so they severely changed the mission to last way longer and made it so that you had to deliver the package instead of just being able to destroy it. This angered the community, but it was okay, because there were still other ways to make money. However, this was just one of the signs that showed that we were slowly heading down a darker path. Another sign was Rockstar's insane greed. Back in the release of Online, you could drive and use multiplayer vehicles as part of a DLC in single player and enjoy it to get an idea on whether to buy it or not. But Cockstar changed it so that it was no longer possible to do that. And you had to be online so that you would have to buy it there. Had no money? Too bad. Buy a shark card think so that you can funny. own the car. If you think about it, PC players were fine because they could just mod the vehicles and stay out of online. But guess what? Rockstar being the cunts that they are, literally went after the modders, the ones on single player, ran up to Big Daddy Take 2 Interactive and had them copyright strike and threaten to sue innocent modders who just wanted to play an iteration of a game on single player they paid $60 for. But no, Rockstar just couldn't leave them alone because they were missing out on money. That was the real reason why they did that. One of the biggest giveaways that Rockstar Games was becoming extremely greedy and money hungry was when they added the ill-gotten gains part 1 and part 2 DLC to online. This remains one of the most popular DLCs to this day because it is the DLC that ruined everything. This was the update that for the first time charged $2.4 million for a supercar. In shark card money, that's equivalent to $45. Yes, $45 for a digital supercar. What am I doing? Playing an EA game? Not to mention the fact that they added a $10 million jet. I shit you not, a $10 million jet. In real life, if you wanted that jet, it would cost you 138 real life dollars. For a gold plane that literally does nothing. 
has no defense systems against enemy players. Romana! Let me Romana! 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 But yet has the decency to put a worthless bottle of champagne in front of me as the game tells me to go fuck myself for spending 10 million dollars on a worthless gold jet. Fast forward a couple of updates into the contract update and the player base is somehow growing after eight years of this game being out and released on not one, not two, but three generations of consoles. In August 2020, GTA Online had an average of 88,398 active players on Steam with a peak of 154,677. In August 2021, the game had an average of 118,883 active players peaking at around 218,784 players. This is a pattern because just when you think the game is going to die and Cockstar is finally going to stop milking this dead game and release what they should be releasing and what everyone wants, GTA 6, they don't. What pisses me off the most is that players refuse to let this game die by spending real money on microtransactions. For God's sake, they consistently make $700 million on shark cards charge players ridiculous prices for items like the Avenger or the Oppressor Mark II, which has not one, but two paywalls. Paywalls. I now have to buy a nightclub and terabyte just to e have a chance to even look at the Oppressor Mark II. Why are they acting as if the Oppressor Mark II is this hot duchess that looks down at you like some peasant and will only give you a sniff of her dirty shoes if you cut your own nuts off and give them to her as a peace offering? You know, I hate to say it, but somebody finally should say something. What the f is a flying time machine car, which has obviously been ripped off from Back to the Future doing in 2021, a modern but technologically limited world such as Los Santos? The Ruiner 2000, a car which can jump, shoot missiles, has a machine gun, and has a parachute, obviously ripped off Knight Rider kit doing there either. The Oppressor, I can go on and on. If it's to do with Rockstar, you already know the answer. We're rich! Diamond! Ah! You would think they would stay true to the correct timeline, but nope. To make more money, they need to add these overpriced, nonsensical vehicles to a game in which they don't belong. On another note, Rockstar continually patches innocent glitches like clothing glitches and funny animations will lose their shit when someone finds a money exploit. Today your boy Sky has a working GTA 5 online money glitch but remains completely cool about literal modders IP booting people from public games and f players trying to make money. You know, I can forgive all of this because I know that Rockstar is running out of time and they know it. They're nervous up there in their cute little headquarters, circle jerking each other about how much money they made this year because I know one thing they don't. Although they do know that the entire world, even Timmy, is waiting for the release of Grand Theft Auto 6, they're running out of time with nothing to show for it. They've released GTA 5 on three different generations. At this point, we'll all be playing GTA 5 on PS97 on our deathbeds while we shit ourselves from old age. They've had eight years to produce or at least let us know that the game is in production. They haven't done neither. At this point, you should ask yourself, are they really that useless and lazy? Probably not, because they are still milking GTA Online so hard the cow's udders are about to explode. It's all okay, because I know, you know, we all know that there will come a time in which GTA Online is going to die. And no matter how many announcements, no matter how hard they try to get us back as a community to play their new update, we're gonna stand up together and give Rockstar the middle finger, tell them, go fuck themselves. We're not playing your shit update or buying your new vehicles or content until you show us GTA 6. You know why Rockstar is retarded? Here's why. Realistically, these cunts have had more than enough time to give us what we want, GTA 6. Yet somehow, after eight years, of GTA 5, we're still waiting. What is stupid is that they don't realize that the more they make us wait, the more hype will build up, the more expectations will be high, and the more margin for error on their part to fuck up the game on release. I mean, look at the leaks already. They're f 
and they know they are. They can't afford a cyberpunk type release and they also can't afford to prolong this any further. They're gonna have to find middle ground. God have mercy on their souls if we find out that they haven't even started production because if that happens, I can guarantee you GTA Online will run drier than my ass on a cold winter night. Rockstar, I genuinely hate you. You used to be a great company, making authentic games, used to be a real developer with a goal in sight, but lately, you're just assholes who care about only one thing, money, and how much you can get away with ripping off car companies, seeing how much you can charge for the new update, and milking GTA Online as much as possible. You become the very thing you wanted to avoid and used to make fun of. You fired Dan Hauser, the best possible employee. You became a second-hand EA, but at least EA has the decency to accept it. The ironic, over-capitalistic adverts in your game that symbolize the greed of corporate America, you've become that. Your definitive edition of GTA, another mindless cash grab and a terrible game. <laughs> GTA 5 Reimagined? Are you f kidding me? What a joke. I hope nobody buys that garbage and sees it for what it really is, another cash grab. Go f yourselves, you hypocritical, self-centered cunts of a video game company. I hope GTA Online dies as soon as possible. To the community, I hope you wake up and realize what this piece of company is doing to your wallets and open your eyes to the truth that this is just a story about greed and profit. I will never buy a shark card if my parents' lives depended on it. And I hope you do the same so we can, for once and for all, kill this game as fast as possible so we can move on to what we really want. Thank you, and I hope you share this video. Rockstar, if you're watching this, just go fuck yourself. Oh, after fire.